Thank you very much for inviting me to present in this year's Post-Medieval Archaeology Congress. My talk today with the title of Recording the Archaeology of Post-Medieval Traditional Watercraft of the Aegean Sea in Greece is part of a larger three-year postdoctoral project that I'm conducting at the University of Helsinki in Finland with the aim to explore connections and possible contributions of archaeological and heritage research to sustainable development and building of climate resilience. The Aegean Sea is part of the Mediterranean, located between Greece and Turkey. The area has been inhabited by human populations for thousands of years and has a very long history of seafaring and shipbuilding. The particular weather conditions, but also the various activities and needs of the local maritime populations living in the area for thousands of years, led to the development of specific traditional watercraft, which has been used in the post-medieval times and generally in the post-17th century periods. The most common term used to generally describe traditional Greek watercraft is the word kaiki, and of course there are a lot more typological categorizations based on the place of construction and the exact use of the boat. But overall, most traditional ships and boats uh, from the Aegean Sea in Greece were propelled by sails or rowing, and so they were originally non-polluting. Despite the usefulness and the importance of this traditional watercraft for the Aegean Sea region and all of the associated activities of the local populations, most traditional ships and boats disappeared gradually in the course of the 19th, 20th and 21st centuries for a variety of socio-political and historical reasons and mostly, of course, uh, the creation of the modern industrial world. This uh, shift in watercraft and this loss in watercraft coincided, of course, with the loss of traditional maritime jobs, the transition to metal or fiberglass motorboats, and the introduction of large-scale fishing trawlers uh, and transport ships, the development of touristic economies, and, of course, the deterioration of the marine environment. Today, very few examples of traditional Greek watercraft survive and there is a general effort to further preserve and protect them uh, with the work uh, that is done by the Traditional Boat Association of Greece. It has been also organizing several boat shows to display the preserved assets and also raise awareness. This has been particularly important because several thousand of traditional boats have been destroyed since the 1990s and particularly after 2014 due to misunderstandings but also mishandlings of various Greek governments over the enforcement of the EU regulation on the European Maritime and Fisheries Fund which aims to control and reduce overfishing and environmental impact of fisheries. Unfortunately, um, this uh, legislation and also the financial incentive um, that offers um, has encouraged several independent fishermen or owners of traditional watercraft uh, to give away their license and decide to give their boat for destruction because they cannot compete in the current uh, modern industrialized uh, maritime market. So because they cannot survive financially, they decide to give their traditional boat for destruction. And of course, there's no um, measure from the governments to actually protect uh, these boats, these boats to, from getting distracted. As part of my three-year postdoc project that I mentioned earlier, I explore the possibility of protecting and even reintroducing traditional watercraft in the Aegean Sea as a way to assist in the sustainable development of the local environment and economy. In order to do that, of course, a core part has been uh, the study and recording of the archaeology of post-medieval traditional watercraft of the Aegean Sea. The shipbuilding techniques and uh, shipbuilding characteristics of post-medieval traditional Aegean boats has been, of course, studied previously, uh, at least since the 19th century. Uh, with the most important uh, work uh, done by Costas Lamianidis, who has engaged for decades with the study of traditional Greek shipbuilding, the typology of traditional Greek watercraft, and of course the recording of any ships and boats that should be uh, preserved as significant assets of cultural heritage. 
Additionally, the various social and historical changes that occurred to post-medieval Greek shipping, but also shipping and maritime communities in the period of transition from sail ships to steamers um, has been studied extensively by Apostolos de Lis and his team uh, with a recent ERC project, Seafaring Lives in Transition. Based on the work um, and the catalogs done by Costas Damianidis, but also based on the catalogs available from the Traditional Boat Association of Greece, um, I have discovered that there's a lot more protection, potential for a systematic recording and protection of the surviving pieces of traditional uh, watercraft in the Aegean Sea uh, from a historical and an archaeological perspective. Of course, this sort of um, archaeological analysis of uh, traditional watercraft and all of their associated uh, maritime activities and intangible heritage is not something new. The methodology has been inspired directly by other studies of maritime history, archaeology and ethnography uh, that have been recording traditional watercraft in various parts of the world, including the Indian Ocean, Ireland, uh, the Nile River in Egypt and Koki in Colombia. This uh, new recording of traditional watercraft of the Aegean Sea through historical and archaeological perspectives is planned to combine evidence and data from a variety of sources. First of all, through the study of historic photograph archives, I plan to document what types of watercraft um, existed during the 19th and 20th centuries in the Aegean Sea but also in what sort of activities this uh, watercraft uh, was um, used but also uh, what sort of environments, what sort of maritime cultural landscapes uh, this um, watercraft was uh, creating uh, for the uh, coastal and maritime communities and how these maritime cultural landscapes changed uh, once the traditional boats uh, started getting reduced and then totally lost. Secondly, through the autopsy of any surviving traditional watercraft and the study of their background, it will be possible to consider how to best protect them and preserve them as important pieces of cultural heritage. Finally, through ethnographic research and interviews with traditional shipbuilders still practicing their craft, as well as uh, traditional boat owners, it will be possible to record some oral histories and intangible cultural heritage elements that are associated with traditional boats and traditional shipbuilding of the Aegean Sea. This recording of the archaeology of post-medieval traditional watercraft of the Aegean Sea is very important because, as I mentioned previously, traditional ships and boats have been rapidly disappearing. So by recording them better, it will be possible to raise more awareness among local populations and policymakers and create the conditions to better preserve uh, the species of Aegean heritage. Additionally, the recording of um, the watercraft, but also all of the associated intangible elements um, that exist around them will constitute significant local knowledge that could contribute to the sustainability and the building of climate resilience uh, for the Aegean Sea region, which is already dealing with a lot of uh, environmental, social and economic impacts due to climate change. The importance of local knowledge uh, for dealing with uh, climate change and the climate emergency right now has been uh, considered very, very important by a lot of um, climate change scientists. And actually, indigenous and local knowledge have been mentioned even in the most recent IPCC report on climate change, impacts, adaptations, and vulnerability. So by using local knowledge, it's possible to help local populations adapt better and um, quicker. In my project, I have been looking very specifically to the various UN uh, sustainable development goals and individual targets. And um, I have been able to notice that by recording the archaeology of a uh, traditional Aegean watercraft and by trying to preserve them or even reintroduce them in the area, it is possible to address several um, SDGs. For example, by protecting and preserving uh, traditional Aegean watercraft, uh, it will be possible to start fulfilling target 11.4 that recommends uh, to strengthen efforts to safeguard the world's cultural but also natural heritage. 
Additionally, with the preservation and understanding of traditional boats, which are largely non-polluting, it would be possible to reinforce and encourage clean energy initiatives and clean energy activities taking place in the Aegean Sea. But it would be also possible to start utilizing local knowledge on the best ways of managing the marine environment in order to move away for industrial fishing and uh, industrialized um, maritime uh, actions. With the protection of traditional boats, it will be also possible to protect their owners, which are usually um, small scale business owners and fishermen, who have less uh, environment impact than, for example, large scale fishing trawlers. Therefore, it will be possible to promote a more sustainable and efficient use of natural resources in the Aegean Sea area and promote small scale businesses and sustainable tourism that is based on local culture and local products. Finally, with a better understanding of the traditional non-polluting post-medieval Aegean boats and also all of the intangible and local knowledge that exists around them, it will be possible to open up the discussion about the need for climate action, but also it will be possible to help people understand how um, populations lived in the Aegean in the past uh, in, har in harmony with nature. And that is going to be a really important step to achieve climate resilience in the future and the creation of local lifestyles that actually can live um, in harmony with a natural environment. In conclusion, the recording of the archaeology of post-medieval traditional watercraft in the Aegean Sea is very important for both the past, namely the preservation of local maritime heritage and maritime identities that are currently endangered, but also for the future because the local knowledge on the use of traditional watercraft can assist uh, significantly in building climate resilience for the present and future generations. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. I will be looking forward to the discussion panels. Thank you.